Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abella. For this video lesson, you'll be joining me to solve the Jam 70 past question. For the subject chemistry, the year 2009, do not go anywhere. Stay with us, and we'll be right back. back to my school YouTube channel and right there we are going to tap question 1 to 25. So join me as we begin with question 1. A mixture of sugar and sulfur can be separated by what methods? Okay, the correct order of these methods. Alright, so we know that sugar is soluble in water, right? Sulfur isn't soluble in water, it is soluble in um, toluene, methyl benzene. Okay, so that means we are going to try dissolving sugar and sulfur in water, right? So that means the sugar will become part of the solution while the sulfur won't. So the first thing is the solution in water. All right, so then we are going to introduce filter paper through the process of filtration. So in filtration, we'll have the sulfur, right, hanging over the filter paper as a residue. Then the solution of water and sugar will filter down as filtrates, right, into the flux. Okay, so after filtration is done, you know, we've taken up the residue of sulfur, then we'll now come to evaporation. So in the evaporation, water is being lost or is being taken out, okay, as vapor. Do you see that now? So what we'll be left with right here will be the sugar particles, okay? So at first, we dissolve sugar and sulfur in water, which is the solution. Then we'll now go to filtration. So in filtration, the sugar and the and water okay they are they, they are they are the solution right they flow down or they flow through the filter paper all right then we have sulfur floating over as the residue then inside the flax then we are going to have this um, solution of sugar and water all right so write the evaporation to remove the water and leave the sugar behind so this is the correct order of methods that should be used option c is the right option Question two, which of the following is a physical change? So in physical change, you know, the, the reaction is reversible, right? And no new substances are formed, easily re reversible. So when you talk about freezing, you talk about um, sublimation, you talk about melting, you talk about liquefaction, you talk about evaporation, these are physical process. So freezing ice cream, you know, it can also melt when you bring it out of the freezer. All right, so this is a physical change, or a physical process. So this is the correct answer. When you dissolve um, calcium in water, we know calcium reacts slowly with cold water. All right. So if you place some calcium metal on in water, you know it's just going to sink down. Then after some time, you notice the effervescence, right? What will be formed there should be calcium hydroxide, which is slightly insoluble in water. So that's for calcium. Then we will come to burning kerosene. We know when it comes to burning, when it comes to combustion, when it comes to fermentation, decay. Okay, these are very good example of chemical changes. All right. So we come to exposing white phosphorus to air. All right, so we have white phosphorus, we have red phosphorus. We're exposing phosphorus to air. We burn with a dazzling flame. All right, so you know, yeah, for this white phosphorus, we know it is more volatile compared to the red phosphorus. In short, we have to store it um, under water, okay? Because exposing this um, white phosphorus to air is going to catch fire, and you are going to see a kind of um, greenish glow. You know, that kind of phenomenon you can refer to it as phosphorescence. All right, so that is for phosphorus, kerosene, calcium, and freezing. So the correct option is option A, freezing ice cream. Number three, the percentage of water of crystallization in zinc sulfate heptahydrate is what? Okay, so let's do this um, calculation together. Let's move to the white board. Okay, so uh, at first we have this as a chemical formula, right? So this is epta 7, right? So let's get the molar mass of the water that we have here. So for the water, we should have you know, 7 encompasses everything that we have here. So we know hydrogen, the atomic mass is 1, times 2 atoms, that is 2, right? Plus oxygen, how many atoms do we have here? We just have one atom, that is 16 times 1, that is 16. 
Okay, so I have 2 plus 16, that is 18. 18 times 7, that should give me 126 gram per mole. So, this is for the molar mass of water. So, molar mass of this, zinc sulfate, then I know zinc is 65, we just have one atom here, plus sulfur, that is 32, we also have just one atom here, right? Then we have um, oxygen, that is 16, times 4 atoms, that should be 64. All right, so I think this should give me 121, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's, let's, let's add up. So we have 65 plus 32 plus 64. Okay, 5 plus 2, that is 7 plus 4, that is 1. 6 plus 3, that is, of course, um, 6 plus 3, that is 9. 9 plus 6, that is 15, right? So 15, okay, I carried something from here. 5 plus 2, that is 7. 7 plus 4, that is 11. I carried 1 from here. So 15 plus 1, I have 16. Okay, that is 161. So 121 plus 161, that should give me 7. I have um, 2 plus 6, that is 8. 1 plus 1, I have 2, it's 7. So to find the percentage of water of crystallization is very simple. That would be 126 over 287 times 100%. Okay? So if I do my multiplication, um, division, and the likes, I should have somewhat around 43.9, thereabouts. Roughly, I can bring it to 44%. So, 44% for the water of crystallization. So, let's go back to the screen to select 44%. Yes, we can confirm that. We have option B. So, option B is the right option. Question 4. 0 0.0075 moles of calcium trisocarbonate 4 is added to 0 0.015 mole of a solution of hydrochloric acid. All right. So, the volume of gas evolved at STP is what? So you are giving the molar volume of the gas at STP as 22.4 dm cube. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so what you are going to notice, this is the equation of the reaction. One mole of this reacts with two moles of this. Now, if you look at the products that we have here, right, this is the only gaseous product. So what they are basically asking us is that how many moles of this, okay, will produce this? Okay, we see that. So we have one mole one mole and take note that this is gotten from this okay but this is the assumption that it's just one mole to evolve one mole of this but the question tells us that 0 0.0075 mole of this so basically we know that one mole of this calcium trisocarbonate 4 okay one mole equals 22.4 isn't it but right there, the, the question supply that we have 0 0.0075 mole of this instead, okay, will give us x volume. So by the time we cross multiply, that means x times 1 equals 0 0.005, right, times 22.4, okay. So by the time we carry out this calculation, it should give us 0 0.168, okay, all right, in dm cube, that is the molar volume. All right, but you can see that the unit supplied to us in our options, they're actually given in centimeter cube. So that means we have to convert from dm cube to cm cube. That means I multiply this answer by 1,000. Okay, so that will be 168, okay, in terms of cm cube. So if I go back to the question, and the question is asking, the volume of gas evolved at STP is what? It is actually 168 cm cube, okay, that was evolved from this particular compound. So 168 cm cube is the correct option. Let's go back to the screen to secure that value. Okay, we have that. Option B, so option B is the correct option. Five. A gas exerts pressure on its container because the molecules of such a gas, okay, collide with the walls of the container. This collision with the walls of the container accounts for what we know as gas pressure. So this is the correct option. So option A, the molecules of a gas collide with the walls of the container. It is how the gas exerts pressure on its container, which is referred to as gas pressure. So option A is the right option. Number six, the basic assumption in the kinetic theory of gases that the, that the collision of the gaseous molecules are perfectly elastic implies that what? Okay, so 
perfectly elastic. All right, so we should know that um, the molecules of gas, you know, they are very tiny. So they move in straight line and at random, okay, and they are moving restlessly. That is firstly, okay, they are restless. Then again, we should know that once they collide with each other, okay, so you are going to see that um, the individual energies may differ, okay, some will slow down, some will move faster, but there is no loss in kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy of the system, there is no loss. That is, the kinetic energy is not converted to heat energy. So we can see that. So that is the implication that it is perfectly elastic. Even when these molecules collide with the walls of the container, they still bounce back like elastic balls. So uh, basically, we should know that the motion of or the activity of these molecules, right, is, it is independent of the other molecules. All right, so uh, when they collide, there's nothing like force of attraction between them. So basically, this is nullified. So the best um, option available here should be option C. Gaseous molecules, we, we, con we continue their motion indefinitely. Though their individual energies may change, but there is no loss in the total kinetic energy of the system. So I'll go with option C. So option C is good to go. Question seven. If an atom is represented as, you can see the superscript is 23, the subscript is 11. So which of the following deduction is correct? So let's look at this. All right. So we know that the proton number accounts for the atomic number, right? So definitely this element X has atomic number of 11 and that element is sodium and alkali metal, group one on the periodic table. So this is the atomic mass. And we know that atomic mass is a product of the addition when it comes to addition of atomic number plus the mass of um, the neutron okay proton number plus neutron number will give you this so i can say that the neutron number here is 12 the proton number here is 11. so let's go through the options together so option a it contains 12 protons this is incorrect it contains 12 neutrons protons they are just 11. All right, so remember we're talking about sodium. It forms a co covalent chloride. This is incorrect. We know that sodium chloride, that bond between them is actually electrovalent bond. You know, your common source, sodium chloride. So it is electrovalent. This is cancelled, cancelled. Okay, so let's look at C. Its atomic number is 23. This is incorrect. Its atomic number is 11. All right, its atomic mass right here is 23. Atomic mass addition of proton number plus neutron number. Okay, then let's, let's look at V. It is an alkali metal. Yes, group one, alkali metal. Some refer to group two as alkali earth metal. So the correct option here or correct deduction here is located. Option D. So option D is very correct. Eight. Cathode ray, cathode rays cause an object placed behind a perforated anode to cast a shadow on the screen. This observation shows that the rays actually travel in straight lines, especially in vacuum. All right, so other properties regarding uh, cathode rays, you know, we know that they travel from the cathode to the anode, okay? They are being deflected in magnetic and electric field. As well, you know, they are negatively charged. But for this particular observation, okay, what they are trying to infer is that cathode rays, they travel in straight lines. And that is where you now see them cast um, sharp shadows of objects, solid objects placed in their path. So option D is the correct option. Question nine, which quantum number divides shells into orbitals? Okay, principal, you're talking about K, L, M, N, and the likes, okay? So uh, we have the azimuthal, okay? The azimuthal, that's where you have the SPDF, okay? And that is, those are the orbitals that we are talking about. When it comes to the magnetic, you know, you are now looking at, oh, uh, this, sub, this is subshell, this is the energy shell, right? This is the subshell. So right there now, you are now looking at, okay, each subshell, like the S, how many do we have there? We have just one. Like the P, okay, we have three, you can see. And then like the D, we have five. The F, we have seven. Then the spin, you are talking about uh, electron spin, basically. All right, so the correct option is option B for the azimuthal um, concept. It is what actually divides quantum number, um, yeah, uh, which divide quantum number shells into orbitals. So option B is the correct option. Ten. The type of bonding in 
tetraamine copper 2 ion is what it is actually coordinate covalent type of bond so the correct option is option a for coordinate covalent bond question 11 the mixture of gases used in a photographer's flash tube is what so we are talking about noble gases here so the correct mixture should be krypton and xenon they are used in high speed pictures when it comes to uh, photographer's flash tube so the correct option is option b for krypton and xenon 12. when sodium trials or carbonate for decahydrates loses water of crystallization to the atmosphere the process is referred to as Efflorescence. We're talking about hydrated salts here, right? Another example is your sodium tetra ozosulfate 4, okay, which you can refer to as your global salt. You can refer to this as your washing soda, okay? The liquid sense, you know, you're talking about salt. If you expose them to the atmosphere, they are going to absorb large amounts of moisture and they're going to turn into solution. All right, so I've explained this. Hygroscopic, you know, they also absorb moisture from the atmosphere. But if they are solid, they will just turn sticky. All right, if I sense, we are talking about escape of gaps. All right, so the correct option is option B for efflorescence. Do not forget that you can have a jam CBT simulated experience by using any of the my school tools. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the my school website. Okay, right there you get to download the my school mobile app for your Android devices, or you can check out my school software for your laptops your desktop, your computers. All right, so join me as I solve question 13. Water can be obtained as the only emphasis product doing the what? Doing the combustion of hydrogen because pure hydrogen right now uh, burns with a pale blue kind of flame, okay, when it, as it combines with oxygen to give you steam, steam water. All right, so when you combustion of hydrocarbons, what you are going to get is um, carbon four oxide, heat, and water. So water is not the only product here. So this is gone. Um, neutralization of an acid by base. You know, in this reaction, what you get is salt and water. So struck out. Electrolysis of brine. What you are going to have? You are going to have um, hydrogen will be caught in here, sodium hydroxide, and I think and chlorine as well. So. Uh, water can be obtained as the only product doing the combustion of hydrogen to give you steam as the only product, pure hydrogen, pure steam. Option C is the correct option. Please let us know that you love what we do. All you just need to do to encourage us is to always hit that like button for us. Also click on the subscribe button and always tap the bell notification so you can get informed immediately we upload the next video content. 14. If 10.5 grams of lead 2,005 is dissolved in 20 cm cube of distilled water at 18 degrees Celsius, the solubility of a solute in mole per dm cube is what? So the formula is super easy. Okay, so we can just take the solubility like this. We can say mass right over the molar mass, okay, times 1000 over the volume that is given. So the mass that we are given is actually 10.5 grams, right? Molar mass of lead 2,005, that is actually 331 if you do your calculation, right, times 1,000 over the volume that is given right now, that is actually 20 cm cube. So this cancels, then I have 50. So 50 times this, then divided by this, your answer should be around 1.58. Roughly, I can break this to 1.6. So this is what we are looking for. So let's go back to the screen to secure either 1.58 or 1.6. Oh yeah, we have 1.60. See, so very well, we have this. So option A is good to go. 15, for a given solute, the concentration of its saturated solution in different solvents are what? Okay, what's going to happen? So if you take note of the factors affecting solubility, you know, you consider the nature of the solute right the nature of this of the solvent if it is polar or non-polar you also consider temperature so even for a given solute at a particular temperature its solubility will differ in different solvents so that implies that option b is the correct option 16 the major source of oxides of nitrogen is from the burning of what 
Okay, so we are talking about the major source of oxide of nitrogen. We know this uh, major source that we can point to, that is the exhaust of transportation vehicles like your trucks, you know, your cars, your buses, your omnibuses, and the like. So, and this um, oxide of nitrogen, like your nitrogen 4 oxide, nitrogen 2 oxide, you know, they are produced when combustion of fuel, right, occurs at very high temperature. So, these pollutants, they have been produced, okay, under that kind of condition. So, the major source of oxide of nitrogen is from the burning of fuel. So, option C is the correct option. Question 17. The acid used in electrolysis of water is dilute what? Okay, so we can call this electrolysis of acidulated water, or we can call this electrolysis of dilute H2SO4. The electrodes we are using, that should be inert platinum, right? So those are the electrodes. Then, you know, the electrolytes here is actually distilled water with few drops of dilute H2SO4. So the acid used in electrolysis of water is actually dilute tetra or the sulfate 6. Yes, yeah, so option C is the correct option. Question 18. So what volume of 1.5 M solution of potassium hydroxide would contain 0.045? moles okay so that's very easy okay so let's just do this you know we have this 1.5 capital m so this is about more per dm cube so this tells me that i have 1.5 right moles in one dm cube right and one dm cube is actually 1000 cm cube okay there are various methods to solving this question but i'm just sticking to a very simple one so we have 1.5 equals to 1000 cm cube so what about 0 0.045 moles? So 1.5 moles, okay, in 1,000 cm cube. So 0 0.045 moles in how many cm cube? We do not know. So what do we do? We cross multiply. Okay, so I have x times this equals 0 .00, 0 0.045, please. 0 0.045 right okay times 1000 okay so i'm dividing both sides by 1.5 okay 1.5 so definitely i know that 0 .0, 0 0.045 times 1000 is actually 45 so i know that 45 divided by 1.5 isn't it i'm trying to work without a calculator so 1.5 means 3 over 2 so if I'm changing this to times, you know, multiplicative inverse, that will be 2 over 3 times 2 over 3. You don't need to go through these um, steps, okay? You can just point your calculator from here, you get your answer. So, but you can still work with me. All right, so I have 3 year 1, I have 3 year 15. 15 times 2, that is 30 cm cube. So, 1.5 in 1,000 cm cube is 0 0.045 in 30 cm cube so let's go back to the screen to secure 30 so let's see if we have that value provided okay very well we have that in option b so option b is the correct option 19 the salt formed from a reaction between citric acid and sodium hydroxide in solution will be what basic okay so we are talking about a weak acid citric acid you know you can find them in uh, fruits like your lime, your orange, and the like. So, weak acid and a strong base. So, the salt you are going to get will be a basic salt. Basically, the results you should get from this reaction should be trisodium citrate, or you can say sodium citrate. All right. So, a kind of simple salification uh, reaction. So, definitely, the kind of salt you should expect, all right, will be a basic salt. So option B is the correct option. Question 20. The color change is observed when testing for reducing agents using acidified. This is K2Cr2O7. Okay, you can see some will tell you potassium dichromate. You know, you can have uh, acidified potassium heptar ozo dichromate 6. Some will still tell you that potassium heptar ozo chromate 6. Okay, whatever thing. So we just, we just know that the chemical formula we're talking about is K2Cr2O7. So the color changes we are going to notice is that actually when you use reducing agents like um, SO2, sulfur so 4 oxide, you know, that acid gas. Okay, so you, you know, part of the ways you can identify is as a reducing agent, you know, when you um, 
when you apply it or when, when there's a reaction between it right and the kmno4 is going to decolorize kmno4 when it comes to this k2cl207 and so2 you know we are picking so2 as the uh, case study of reducing agent right here so what is going to happen to this is going to change the color from orange to green okay that same so2 if you can create a reaction between it and um, ion 3 chloride there's going to be a change from brown to pale green all right so the color changes observed when testing for reducing agents using um, this solution you will notice that it's going to change from orange to green so the correct option is option b orange to green 21 the oxidation state of um, chromium in k2cl207 is what so you have to first identify this particular compound okay this is um potassium heptyl so dichromate 6 or some presentation will tell you potassium dichromate okay or some will tell you potassium dichromate 6 all right so i've just mentioned the oxidation state of chromium here chromate 6 chromate 6 so definitely the correct option is b plus 6 all right so perhaps you need um, the solving to this particular question the calculations i've provided it on the my school website okay just um check on the link in the description below jam 2009 Okay, so in our classroom there, you are going to see this. So, the correct option is option B, 4 plus 6. Perhaps you have questions you'd like to ask. Please, we are so much interested. All you just need to do is to use the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to ask your questions, and our solution providers are going to help you out. So, join me as of question 22. Which of the following metals is purified commercially by electrolysis? So when you look at the uses of electrolysis, you know, it's, you can talk about um, purification of metals like your copper, like your mercury, like your silver, like your gold. I mentioned copper. All right. Then other uses like extraction of metals and non-metals as well. You know, you can also talk about electroplating of metals, okay, with another metal and the like. So let's go back to the question. Which of the following metals is purified commercially by electrolysis? is you know the impure copper that is cutting you know from the hole okay then you it, let it undergo electrolysis so that you can have this so the correct option here is option d for copper remember i mentioned copper i mentioned mercury i mentioned silver i mentioned gold okay so these ones are purified using electrolysis so we have copper supplied here so the correct option is option d for copper that's the symbol of copper c u you may have better steps or explanations that you like to share please we are so much interested all you just need to do is to use the comment section below please indicate the question number and the explanations or reviews you like to share question 23 what current will deposit 3.25 grams of zinc in two halves okay so let's go to the whiteboard so remember that the valency of zinc is two all right so that means we require two faraday all right so i will remember that zinc is actually 65 isn't it so that is one mole of zinc okay which is actually 65 gram one mole which is the same thing as 65 gram of zinc okay we deposited by two faraday isn't it all right so we can see from here then we are now told that um 3.25 grams will require many faraday we don't know so let's cross multiply so right here i have x times 65 equals 3.25 right times 2 faraday okay so what do we do we divide both sides by 65 isn't it so i have x equals 3.25 times this this is actually 6.5 faraday over 65 so if we divide we should have 0 0.1 faraday isn't it and that's the 0 0.1 times 96500 so if i multiply this i should have 9650 9650 this is q the quantity of electricity required so remember that q is actually i c so we have to find the current isn't it that implies that i equals q over t so there are different methods okay to solve this question but i'll just stick with this i feel this is simpler okay so q is actually 9650 isn't it then our t the time um, given there is two hours so we have to convert to seconds right 
So that will be 2 hours times 60 seconds, right? Make 1 minute. Then 60 minutes make 1 hour. So we can see that now. So if we divide this, our answer should go somewhere 1.3402 thereabouts. So I can just put it 1.34 ampere. This is the unit for current. So 1.34. Let's go back to the board, the screen rather, to secure 1.34. Yeah, we have that with option C. So option C is the correct option. 24. So we have the equation of the reaction. So the standard free energy change for the reaction above at 1300 Kelvin is actually minus 43. So at this temperature, the reaction is what? Is feasible because once this has a negative value, it tells you that the reaction is feasible. All right. So in case you still want to... Um, different ideas or concepts regarding this you can just check on the my school website okay just search for champ 2009 question 24 you are going to see wonderful contributions from the my scholars so the correct option is option c for feasible question 25 two equal bulbs one containing ammonia and the other nitrogen are opened mouth to mouth okay to each other at room temperature okay so the entropy in the mixture of gases is likely to do what okay so two equal volumes. so we are talking about equal volume now take note of this when two or more gases okay when they are mixed together at constant volume okay there's going to be an increase in entropy uh, as well this kind of reaction between ammonia and nitrogen you know it is independent of temperature a very good range a very wide range okay so definitely the entropy in the mixture of gases is likely to increase so option b is the viable option we've come to the end of this video lesson but there are definitely more segments to come all you just need to do is to always hit that like button for us also do not forget the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get informed immediately we upload the next video section just for you